Welcome to Emotions and Eating with Nicola Beer. Nicola controlled her feelings using food for 25 years, so she knows how draining it is to be constantly thinking about or acting out with food. Thankfully, having made an amazing breakthrough in her recovery, her mission became about helping others escape the unsatisfying cycle of frustration and self-medication with food. Nicola is determined to help you find your inner strength so you can be healthy, gain confidence, feel great, and be at peace with yourself and food. Hi there, it's Nicola Beer and I'm super excited to be talking about the importance of loving your body. Love and only love produces miracles. In order to live a fulfilling, happy life and relationships, we need to love ourselves. So many of us claim to love ourselves and yet don't or cannot love our bodies. Your body, my body, is part of who we are. And only if we love our bodies will we truly love ourselves. If you only love your body when you're thin, but hate it when you're not, then the love you have for yourself is conditional. It's conditional love. Which is not love at all, because love is unconditional. So you can't really love yourself if you don't love your body. In relationships, not loving the body can affect physical, affection, sex and overall mood. If we hate the way we look, this can lower our libido and our desire to be seen and be naked. It can also affect our mood, carrying the burden of a negative view of ourselves or guilt over what we're eating or not eating, or negative self-talk, weighs us down. So for yourself, for any relationship that you're in, for your self-esteem, the best thing you can do is to love your body as well. So the first thing I'd like to look at is the importance of loving our body and why we don't love our bodies and how to love our bodies more. Because in order to love our bodies more, we need to understand the number one reason why we often don't love our bodies. And this is blame. You might be thinking, well, how can I love my body when I hate my stomach rolls, or flabby arms, or stocky legs, or perhaps you like the look look of your body because it's too thin, or if you're a woman, your breasts are too small, or your butt is too small or too big. The first step to loving your body is to begin by asking yourself, what am I hating my body for? As if you think about it, your body has not done this to you. You have done whatever it is you have to your body. Your body is responding to what you are doing with your body and what you are fueling your body with. So it's your mind, emotions and cravings that have led the body to look the way it looks. In reality, your body is not to blame here at all. It can be useful to repeat next time you go to blame your body in the mirror for not looking or being the shape or size you want it, to say, my body has not done this to me. I have done this to it. My body has not done this to me. I have done this to it. My body has not done this to me, I have done this to it. It can be really powerful to repeat that three times in front of the mirror. To really begin to love your body. Because you have not been abused by your body. Your body, at some point, or maybe is currently, being abused by you. And this is the crazy thing about it. That so many of us blame our bodies. And I know I used to, all the time. Our miraculous body is doing the best it can, despite the pain that we put it through. Whether that pain is overloading it with junk food, or too much food that it's difficult to digest, or starving it, or purging behaviours. Despite our harmful food habits, our body has functioned the best it can to keep us alive and well. I certainly made my body work in overdrive with my huge addiction to bread sugar-free products and other sugar. All three that spiked my insulin through the roof and sent 
my body into spasm to keep up? Have you also made it harder for your body to function at its best? Our bodies are wonderful. They continue to support us even when we don't support them. So instead of looking at our bodies as enemies, I believe that we need to remind ourselves of how miraculous and precious and resistant our bodies are. What are you afraid of? Most people I've worked with say to me that they hate their body and in fact, when we explore beneath this, they are in fact afraid rather than hating their physical appearance. Beneath the dislike of the body is a much greater driver, fear. This can be not liking your body or areas of your body because you fear not being accepted, you fear being laughed at, you fear being judged by yourself or by others, you fear being seen, you fear being disappointed, you fear losing someone. So is there any fear behind not liking any area of your body? Maybe the fear is that you can't be happy with yourself unless you see yourself as perfect. And sometimes the fear can be not being perfect. Another question that is quite insightful to ask yourself is, can you remember the first person who judged, envied or hated your body? Mine was definitely my mum. As a child, she would call me Skinny Winnie. Then she would mention I had, I had a full figure when I went through puberty and that she wanted my bust and how she would have had a bigger bust if she didn't starve herself as a teenager. When I put on weight and when my sister put on weight, she would boast that she had a smaller waist than me and my sister and how happy she was, as if it was at some kind of competition. So I started judging my body at a very young age. At school, I was called Flamingo Legs. And then once, when I was 13, I went to a disco party at a hall. And bless me, I don't know what I was thinking in hindsight, but I put socks into my bra to look bigger. Busted. And I was absolutely busted. People found out, and I got called Tissue Tits which was horrendous. I cried so much my dad had to come and pick me up from the party less than an hour after he had dropped me off. And I was nicknamed Tissue Tits for a long time. Goodness knows why I did that. And if I could go back in time, I would hold that 13-year-old younger me, hug her, tell her how much I love her, how beautiful she is, and how sacred and amazing her body is and to accept and love herself just the way she is. How imperfect is perfect. In my two serious romantic relationships in my 20s, both men I attracted had a thing about wanting slim girls. Both were very conscious of their own stomach and chest, worried about being fat when they were so far from it. Like attracts like, I really believe that. I judged my body and put myself down and I attracted to me other people to do that to me and that also did that to themselves. So whose fault was it? No one's. It's a cultural, psychological and emotional thing, disliking our body. So is emotional eating and food addiction a societal issue, which I'm going to be explaining more in coming episodes. And I'll also be having an episode on sugar addiction because sugar addiction is something that I particularly suffered with for countless years I couldn't tell you but it's a long long time so if you're interested do subscribe to the show to make sure that you don't miss any of these episodes on the emotions and eating with Nicola Beer podcast show personally when we're looking at fault I love the saying everybody is doing the best they can with the emotional resources they have my mum developed anorexia and eating issues as a way to cope with the pain of losing her mum to cancer when she was age 16 and the stress taking on a household, grieving the loss of her mother and having a full-time job. Then when she had me and my brothers, or my brother and my sisters, we had no money and she fed us on sugar. Highly refined carb diet, we lived on cereals, bread, pasta, potatoes 
as they were cheap to buy and filled us up. And yet, I have nothing but love for her. She did the best she could with the emotional and other resources that she had. Just like through the difficult times that I had through my life, I turned to bulimia, I turned to starving, I turned to overeating, to deal with the difficult emotions, the drama, the stress in my life. I was doing the best I could with the emotional resources that I had. Very recently, my dear mum came to stay with me for two weeks and she was still in the mode of criticising her body in the mirror one minute and at the next mealtime would eat so much that she couldn't move and she did this again and again and again. And so these are patterns that we pick up and we can repeat them. And often we pick up these patterns when we're going through difficult times. So when did you begin to fear having your body judged by others or by yourself? Has anything I share with you today resonated with you? To unlearn this pattern, the key thing is to love our bodies regardless. This is what's going to bring us peace of mind and enjoyment in life. Some people, whether early on in life or later, learn to hate their body because when they were thin or bigger, others hurt them so much that they blamed their body. They took the pain and said to themselves, because I look this way, I got hurt. Pain and blame can often get transferred onto the body. Especially, I see this time and time again with those I help with verbal or sexual abuse. Well, one person has decided that it's emotionally and physically safer to be the opposite size or to change size, to change shape. And they do this as a form of protection to protect themselves from the pain that they suffered. Well, if any of this is resonating with you, you can now rid yourself of those old thoughts in your head. With intention and prayer, you can ask for help to forgive those in their ignorance that may have caused pain and renew and revitalise your way of thinking and behaving. Our bodies have not done anything to us. It has merely reflected the battlefield going on in our minds. So in order to love our body, we must forgive our body for what it has not done, and also forgive ourselves for what we have done to it. When you were born, your body was perfect. We can return to this perfection and let the body do what it needs to do best function at its optimum for us. We can do this by listening to our bodies, fueling our bodies with nutrients, fats, protein, that it needs and looking after it in a healthy way. Also by moving our bodies in a way that feels good, by breathing in ways that help our bodies and by exercises to look, touch, hold, admire and caress our bodies. So I'm going to be sharing in the next few episodes on how to love your body. I hope that this has been motivation on the importance of loving your body. And now I'm going to give you exercises in the next few weeks on how to do that, how to make that change. We can start looking at the food element of loving your body. Then we'll move on to exercise as well as rituals you can do to really give and nurture your body and support it as it's carried you this far in your life and it's necessary to carry you for the, your future. And also, our body is the vehicle that holds our soul. So we want to look after it. We were gifted this body. And so it's our responsibility to love it, to care for it, to support it. And when we do, we feel so much happier Happiness is not from the outside in, it's from the inside out. I hope that this is interesting, if not inspiring. And I know it's a bit of a serious topic, not loving our bodies and blaming our bodies, but it's so important to living a happy, love-filled life. I can't wait for you to join me in learning more about how to love your body coming up very soon. Thanks. Have a great day ahead. Thank you for listening to Emotions and Eating with Nicola Beer. 
To book your free eating strategy session with Nicola, get the free eating support audio or donate. If you have enjoyed the show and want to help keep the show flowing, visit www.nicolabeard.com.